The church's teaching on marriage and sexual ethics is simple, really, and it predates the Bible because it's written on our bodies. When a man and woman are intimate, it produces a baby. That baby requires care and commitment, and that's why virtually every culture, person, and political party until about 2015 has enshrined that one unique relationship with laws and rituals to protect it, marriage. And even though the world has moved on, the church still sticks to that simple rule, that one flesh union should only happen between man and woman because of the nature of our bodies, and that man and woman are the only ones who should be married. That's because the church treats marriage like any gift received from God. We didn't invent it, so we don't get to reinvent it. Does that faith mean the church would condemn everyone who's same-sex attracted to an empty life? If you believe that who we are is reducible to who we're attracted to, if you believe that marriage is the only path to emotional fulfillment, if you believe that a physically romantic relationship is the only path to love, then yes, then the church's teaching would be unimaginably cruel. Of course, as a follower of Jesus who himself wasn't married, I don't believe any of that. Here's what I do believe. Whether you're married or not, whether you're any orientation you might imagine, none of it changes the simple fact that God is love. His only motive behind what he wrote in scripture and nature is love. And that the love that is God is better than marriage, better than physical intimacy, better than anyone or anything, and every love in this life leads up to him anyway. And that love is yours when you follow him with your whole life. That's not easy. Of course, Jesus didn't promise his followers an easy path. But easy is nothing compared with the glory and love offered by God. And you can take that or leave it. But please don't call it hate. It's as far from hate as it gets.